What is up everybody? Welcome back to Mount MoGraph. As always, my name is Matt and in today's video, uh, we're actually going to do something really, really cool. Um, I put together a script called the Effortless Accents Script uh, for After Effects and it is my way of saying thank you uh, for checking out the channel over the year that it's been around. Uh, liking videos, leaving comments, whatever you've done, I really do appreciate it and I'm having a ton of fun with it and that's why I keep making videos. If you guys weren't so awesome, probably wouldn't post videos. But anyway, if you go to mountmograph.com slash freebies down at the bottom here you have the effortless accent script and you can click this little link to download it um, right here is a tiny little example of what's possible with this script um, and it should be pretty cool so wherever you downloaded it uh, just undo that zip file um, and you'll have an effortless accents JSX bin which you dropped into your script UI folder just like any other script and then once you're in After Effects you can dock the panel anywhere so I've docked it right here so anyway let's go ahead create a new composition and I'll show you what this script does so I've created a square composition which is no good so let me make this 1920 by 1080 uh, just so it looks a little bit better so anyway, uh, once you've docked your Effortless Accents script, um, you can click this little question mark, um, which just gives you some little information, uh, some links that I would say are helpful but might not be, and you can ignore them. Uh, but the cool thing with this is I really wanted to do something that would make it so people can see what you do, see and then get inspired and get new ideas. So if you have a Twitter, you can tag this, um, any video you put up, share it on Twitter with the tag Effortless Accents, and that way other people can search it and get inspired. So that'd be really awesome. Um, and that's about it. So that's what that window. Feel free to look over that do whatever you want with it and then this button right here is the effortless accents thing so I should probably click it to show you what it does I'm gonna click it and we're gonna get a ton of stuff that happens so uh, once again I'll show you you click it you're gonna get tons of controls and also uh, a whole bunch of expressions will get generated that you really don't have to worry about so anyway we now have this little uh, symbol here now what does this do well this is the effortless accents so I'm gonna go over what the controls do and then hopefully you guys can have a ton of fun with it so I'll try to keep this video short and uh, brief anyway your first little control here is the global position so it's an easy way just to move the thing or you can drag it around however you want and if you click reset it'll reset to the middle of your composition so that's kind of nice if you're just trying to attach it to stuff um, or objects or whatever you want so I'll reset that uh, number of copies pretty self-explanatory here and this is going to be uh, making copies of this um, accent so that's pretty cool and if you set it down past zero into the negatives it's gonna snap to zero and uh, the numbers actually still gonna be really in the negatives so just click reset that'll reset it to zero and you can drag it back up to whatever you want so there we go we got 13 um, the copies revolution is uh, the well the revolutions it will make around this object so I have 13 copies if I go ahead and just knock this down to like 180 we now only have half of the object uh, so that is going to be cool in a little bit just wanted to tell you what that is um, we have a revolution offset and if we do this it's kind of kind of randomize um, where our accents are so I'm gonna put this back to zero or you can click a reset we have the accent offset which is going to be um, an offset of where the accents are and there is so much you can do with this script um, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything you can do with it but I'll leave that up to you guys um, but this is how you can kind of randomize the actual position of it and then you can also ra randomize the revolution of these so that's gonna be pretty cool down the road um, we have the distance from center um, once again that's kind of self-explanatory um, the center of the object is gonna be your global position thing as you can see by that We'll reset that and then um, your distance from center you can uh, get this little accent so that's kind of cool and uh, that is going to be part of the effect and that's actually why I started making it I was like that would be nice to have a little automated way to do this so um, this is going to be probably one of your mainly used controls but you'll probably use all of them all the time I hope uh, so anyway uh, we have a link width and height checkbox that will actually skip for a second and let's go to the accent width so with this one it does what you would think uh, it changes the width of these objects so you can go ahead 
and start to see how this can be pretty cool. Um, just like that, you can get some cool objects. Um, and then also we'll play around with the height for a second and uh, get stuff like this. So um, as you can see, um, just like that, it's pretty powerful um, for what it is. And you can, once again, uh, same thing, reset it to zero. If you drag it past uh, into the negatives, it'll snap to zero, supposedly. Um, it actually did not there. But um, so that's that. Uh, let's see here. Turn this back up a little bit. So we now have uh, the link width and height, which does what you would think. If you click it, it'll actually link um, all the properties to the width uh, slider. So then when you change this, um, you'll be able to get nice proportional changes like that. So that is one of those things. Um, next up, we have, I'll undo that, we have the uh, stroke width, uh, which is just, again, what you would think. Um, you can turn this up and uh, get some skinny strokes. Uh, you can get thick strokes if you do want any strokes at all, which would bring me to the next one, um, which is the fill on and off. Uh, and you can click this to just turn off your fill and just work with those strokes. And then you can kind of see why the stroke width would be uh, a fun to play around with. So that's one of those. Uh, again, um, if we turn the fill back on, we can easily pick colors either by clicking this box to change the color like this, or literally just use your eyedropper and click an object um, or anything on the screen that you like the color of um, so you can do stuff like that or you can uh, just set it to something that you like like red so we have the stroke on and off which does uh, what the fill on and, on and off did you can turn on or off your stroke if you'd like to work with solid shapes and get those nice pops um, and then as you can see it's, it's it gets so much fun to play with I really recommend checking this out um, and let's see, I'll just reset these. So anyway, uh, next up, I'll turn this uh, stroke on and off, uh, back on, and I'll turn the fill off. So let's go to our stroke color, similar to what the other one did. You can just easily change your stroke color by uh, clicking these. I actually accidentally started uh, the accent roundness, which just changes the roundness of your object. So if you have it linked and you want perfect circles, uh, you can turn uh, this down to zero for squares, or you can turn it up to as much as you need to to get perfect spheres. And then from there, you can play around with your stroke width and even get these cool little pop effects. So this is starting to get pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just go over a couple uh, quick examples here and uh, then uh, have fun with it. So pretty much, I'm gonna actually delete this effect and I'll just start fresh. So I'll just click effortless accents, generate one, and uh, you can actually generate as many as you like. So I just have tons and tons of them now. So anyway, let's just make the one and uh, maybe we will keyframe some stuff. So let's actually just grab all of these um, and just set a keyframe. Well, maybe I have to actually click all these. So I thought that would work, uh, but you'll click all of these and just set keyframes. And then from there, we'll just have a ton of fun. So I will press U on the keyboard and see all those keyframes. As you can see, we've got a ton. So let's first start by maybe switching the color over time of our stroke color. So over time, I will switch it to red. And then you can see the gradient changes. So now when I slide back, we're actually gonna get a nice little change between that. So I guess I may as well also set the fill color to change. Uh, we'll change this to um, yellow, I guess. And once again, we get the gradient. So uh, now over time, we have it changing. Let's go ahead and make our distance bigger. So uh, we'll just go over to our distance from center, turn this up to here, uh, maybe go back in time and uh, set this down in the middle. So we now have a little pop that is pretty cool. I'll actually make this a little bit closer. That's gonna be boring. So then, uh, set my work area. So we already have a little pop and this is like those super basic accents you see. So we can easily take this to the next level. Um, we can do something like accent offset over time. So we're actually going to get some of them will change more distance over time. So that's kind of cool. I guess we'll also set a keyframe for uh, revolution offset. So they actually spin a little bit too. So now we're starting to get some pretty cool uh, little extra animations on top of this. I actually hated that uh, revolution offset. I probably went a little crazy with it turn this down to maybe just like 25 and the accent offset a little less as well. Um, so anyway, you can just keep on playing with all this stuff and get tons of things. Um, if we would like to, what you can do is turn this up over time and start to get some craziness like this. So it now is going to pop and do all kinds of crazy stuff. If we want, we can actually turn our, um, uh, stroke color or our fill color off um, and then really you can get these really fun geometric patterns if you turn up your copies 
uh, you can start to get just absolute craziness that <laughs> is really, really fun. So um, as you can see, this is just a super basic example uh, of what you can do. And then from there, you can go ahead and create like a black background and uh, maybe grab like a glow effect or something and throw this guy on your effortless accents. And uh, we already have something pretty dang cool. So uh, that is a super basic overview of it. You can do so much more with this script and I hope you guys have fun with it. Thank you so much for being a part of Mount MoGraph. Uh, you're, you are literally the only reason I keep uploading videos because you guys are so awesome. So uh, feel free to share this with your friends, uh, use it on projects, do whatever the heck you want. And the only thing I ever ask, well, not ever ask, I've never asked before, but uh, there's now I've had too many videos on this channel. So sometimes I see a comment and I just can't respond to it. There's not too many, but uh, there's sometimes too many to actually respond to. So if you do see a question or anything that you know the answer to, uh, it would be so awesome if you could just uh, answer the question from whoever asks it, if it's not absolutely ridiculous. And I would appreciate that so much. So anyway, guys, thank you so much once again for being a part of Mount MoGraph and uh, I really do appreciate it. So keep learning and rock on and uh, doing motion graphics. Peace out, guys.